All right, so today we're actually setting some concrete forms on this house here in Middleton, Idaho. And I want to take you down in the hole here where these guys are working and we're going to show you what they're doing so you can see how it's put together. Let's get started. All right, so this is the house in Middleton, Idaho that we're building right now. And we're actually setting the forms. So the footings went in yesterday. I wanna walk you around here. We're gonna, we're gonna take a look and show you what's been going on. But this was originally gonna have a basement. The basement's been removed. If you look back this way, you can see how far we're still on the ground. We lifted this up over four feet. So we had a soils engineer have to come in and had to, as we compacted this, we put a bunch of GSB in here and then topped it with some road mix. But we lifted this up over four feet from where it was at before at the bottom of the basement. So the basement got completely demoed and then this went back in, four feet of fill. So we had a bunch of trucks coming in and out of here. All right, so these footings, these got poured here yesterday and these are two feet wide. So if you get up on top of the wall, you can see that this is an eight inch thick wall. And this, uh, you got another eight from this side, eight in the middle of the wall, eight over here is the other side. So and they're 12 inches thick. So you can see that that's about, that's is 12 inches. So that's how thick that is. And then these form boards that these guys got, these are 30 inches. So they come up 30 inches. And then they're gonna stack another board on top, two, a two foot board, and then they'll actually gonna finish this out 47 inches uh, below uh, or above the footing. So it'll finish out. And you can see in here, the rebar, it's getting tied and how they put these walls together. So inside here, this they have these clips and these clips use a concrete nail. We snapped lines on this this morning to get the edge of the, the wall here. And you can see that line just kind of on the edge of that form. And that, they put these clips, it looks like about every 12 inches on the bottom. And then you see this, we got the, this is all number four bar uh, that's inside the foot, inside the wall. And then they have these verticals that we are, are 24 inch on center. So number four bar is spaced 24 inch center as well, the horizontal bar. And uh, you can see that this is another one tied right here. This is actually twisted. It's easy to go up like this. It will once they get this wall set and done. But they're working on that over there on that side right now. So one's tied in the middle. One's up about four or five inches off of the actual footing. And then you have another bar that's up here at the top. So and they extended these bars up that, that, that came out of the uprights that came out of the footing. They have to have a minimum of 30 inch lap. So these got cut where they're 30 inches tall or more. And then they extended them up to get them to the top of the wall here. So sometimes you can, you can order these things out where they're longer than you just cut the tops off, but they had to make these ones up out on the field here. So they actually clipped these together here. So this is where they'll stack another board on top, but this holds these boards together. And then all this rebar runs down the center. What we got is this is a, it's a 30 inch, 30 inch square, it's 12 inches thick. So this is a pad footing. It's got three number four bars each way uh, in, in the bottom of it was sitting on some chairs. And then what we're doing is, this is gonna get a sauna tube on it. It's it's marked out for a 16 or a 12 inch sauna tube right now. I think we're gonna increase these to 16s. But this has a tie on it around here. So we're sticking these, these uprights come up. They have hooks in the bottom that go into the bottom of the footing. And then they come up. And then what happens is we're gonna put another tie here at the top and this ties this rebar together. And then there's a CBS Q66 post bracket that will be sitting on the top of this. And then what that does is it allows, it, this is cut short enough here to where that bracket will be in here embedded in the concrete right about up in here. So it won't end up hitting that rebar. We wanna to have to fight that rebar when we're wet setting the CBS Q66s. So it got left down just a little bit there. So this is another look on the other side of the building here you can see this is they got this top bar tied all the way down and then they're coming around the corner so we got to get our the utilities are all inside now too you can see those they're actually right down below me here so these are all stubbed in and we got the sewers actually sleeved we still have to dig that out and put that in over there but uh that's in there now so utilities are in Here's another look down this wall where the guys are working. And then we got another porch off the back here that has shorter columns. Cause if you can see here down the, down the side, we dug down to good solid dirt on the back, but this was outside the original basement footprint. So on this side was not basement. So we actually twisted this house, Rick rotated it clockwise. And when we did that, 
what ended up happening was uh, we got into some good dirt over here. So we just dug this down just enough to, to get below frost line, which is two feet. And then from there, we, uh, yeah, we got down to dug to good dirt. And then we poured these footings the same as the front, but the columns don't have to be near as tall. So the song tubes will be a little bit shorter because of that reason. All right, so I want to explain to you kind of what we have to do once we get all of this concrete poured. So once these walls are poured out, what's happening is you see behind me here, you got these columns and these are below grade, obviously. You can see they're minimum of two feet below grade. And then you have this hole that's kind of between the actual footing behind me that you can see right here. And then you have this steps up. So we have to actually come back in here. We have to use what's called a jumping jack, which is some people come a whacker, jumping jack, whatever. You're going to just, we're going to get some good fill dirt. We're going to start backfilling and lifting this up in lifts, six inch lifts to get good compaction. And then we're going to come up and we'll get up to grade where we need to be up here on this wall, which is significantly higher. You can see where the rebar is at. We got to come up that high. So there's a lot of backfill work that actually has to happen on this thing after we're done. So the same thing is, I'll to walk you around the front, is in the front over here, you'll see that, I mean, you can look at, look at the amount of space out here. This is about behind me, between the wall and here. This is about 10 feet, probably 11 feet. All this has to get lifted up. And you can see that grade, that grade right there is about three feet above. So plus the grade is going to go a little bit higher. So we don't have any steps going up into the house. So, and then one of the things we'll, I'll, we'll actually show you as we're doing it, but the, the, the trusses, these are floor trusses are getting built, not TJIs. And they clear span this entire building from front to back, 28 feet. So there's no footings on the inside. All right, so when we had the basement here, we took a actual radon detector made by, made by Air Things and we put it in there and we got a reading on some radon. It wasn't super high, but it was there. So it was, I think it maybe a one or so, which is a you know, stay and monitor if you know one and a two. But as precautionary, we're gonna go ahead and put a radon system in this building. So the way we designed this, once the basement was gone, was this footing is 12 inches thick you can see that behind me here and you can see it all the way around the building here so what the plan is, is we're going to take some three quarter inch crushed rock we're going to put a little bit of a bed in here a few inches of bed and then we're going to bring in some four inch uh, which would be like a drain pipe but it has it's perforated it has holes in it so and you use it for septic a lot of times we're going to put that down in here and then we'll put that on top of the rock and then we're going to actually take the rock and we'll fill it up to the top of this footing so this footing then has crushed rock to this level here with radon down in here. And then we'll have our stack coming up for the radon, which will go up and be the passive, or we'll put a vent on it and actually vent it out the roof. But then we'll take a vapor barrier, 15 mil vapor barrier, and we're gonna take that right over the top and flush out the concrete. We'll roll it up the wall and we'll seal it against the wall so we eventually stop any air from coming out of there. So the radon will go through into those drain pipes and up and out the stack. So that's the plan. So we'll show you that when we actually do it, but that's what we're set up to do here. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed that update here on how the form's going in on this project. If you'd like more information on building a custom home or an ADU, go to freemansconstruction.com. We have a ton of information there. If you're interested in buying or selling real estate, go to freemansrealty.com. We'd love to help you. So thanks again for watching and we'll see you again soon.